All right, so I'm almost done, almost ready for your questions, but I'm going to ask two questions for prizes. And um, here's how I'm going to do it. If you yell out the answer, you're immediately disqualified. If you've been to one of my talks before, you're disqualified because I, I've asked the same questions before. Uh, the first, I'll try and be good. The first person to raise their hand gets the first chance to try the answer. And then you get a very expensive, very rare prize, OK? All right. I have a feeling you're all going to know this because so many people were standing up. Uh, the question is, there is one actor that's done a voice in every single one of our films. What's the actor's name? Right there. Yep, it's John Ratzenberger. Good job. <laughs> Yay. So if you've seen Brave, you know, did you see Brave? Just say yes. Good. Then you know what this is. That's from Brave. All right, one more question, and this one's tougher, and I should have brought an example. Um, does anybody know what a one sheet is? You know. Wow, what is it? That's not a one sheet. <laughs> but I like your confidence. <laughs> what is your favorite? Oh, oh, hold on just a minute. Let me answer the, uh, get an answer for this expensive prize, and then <laughs> it's Nemo. Um, anybody you want to take a guess? No, good guess. Yes. Um, in, in advertising, there are three sheets and one sheet, which denote uh, uh, the size of what uh, will have the, uh, the copy. Okay, is there anybody that can take his answer and get it correct? If not, you get this. He's close. Anybody? Yes. Is it the, the movie poster? That's exactly what it is. So a movie, sorry, but thanks for giving him a clue. <laughs> Have you seen Brave? Yes. Wonderful. <laughs> uh, a movie poster, a one sheet, it, what's really cool about it is take a look at one sometimes because what makes them unique is they're printed on front and back. And on the back, it's backwards. The reason why they do that is because they slide them into your movie theater and there's a lot of light. They're exposed to a lot of light outside. And normally, if you print it on one side, it could start fading within a few days. But because the back is printed in reverse, it maintains color really, really well. And that's why, if we're lucky, you don't see a movie poster fade over time. And so if you're really, really cool, you get a one sheet, and you put it up in your house backwards, and then everybody thinks you're a knucklehead, except for those of us that have been in the movie business, and we know that you're really cool. <laughs> All right, so anybody have any questions? And I think, should we give them the trick microphone? <laughs> oh, nice. Or you can just, yeah, this is your chance. You just shout out your question, she'll repeat it for everybody Yeah. What has kept, you know, what in the working culture or, you know, that picks, like, picks our morals or values that has kept the product, like, not just maintaining the same level of excellence, but improving as time goes on, especially after being bought by Disney and, right. you know, having, you know, growing in size? Oh, man. The question is, what has kept Pixar's level of um, filmmaking high or improving as time went on, even though we were bought by a large company, Disney, back in 2005? Um, there's no real secret to this. It's ev that the story is sacred. And all of the other departments bow before story. And so as great as I want to think the art department is, um, we really do our best to help the story. One of the unique things we have is we have a brain trust at Pixar. It's the sort of 
uh, some people in the executive team and all the directors, and they look at every film and production about once a quarter. And they then uh, watch the film and they go up into West Side One and they uh, beat that thing apart. And it is brutal, I hear. I've never been to one. But they will go over a movie and go over it and go over it trying to make it better. A lot of companies will come in with a script and the script is locked and they just make the film. Our films never are finished until they are in the can on opening day. So on Brave, even though we had to let go of the film on, uh, I think it was April 15th this year, or 16th, whatever it was, um, we were still changing parts of the story in the end of uh, March. So we really, it's very, very hard on the team and downstream but we really try hard not to lock our stories. Um, but that the only reason why we stop making our films is because they're released. Otherwise, we would still be fixing Brave. So. And some, admittedly, we're better at than others. We all have our favorites. What's really fun is to go through all the films and let people raise their hand and see, you know, was your favorite Mo whose favorite was Monsters, whose favorite was Nemo, and you will almost get a completely even voting pattern for all of them, which is neat. So I want to answer your question before I forget. My favorite was, Bra uh, sorry, was Nemo, um, and I also love Toy Story 3, and I love Up. None of those movies are films I worked on. So what I find over the years is there's so much emotional attachment to the films I work on that I can't love them as objectively as the three I just mentioned. Another question? Yeah, right here. Oh. Hey, that's a nice shirt. Thanks. You should know what a one sheet is. Yeah. Now you do. I came two years ago, so I... Oh, you couldn't do it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> So his question was, on each film, we seem to have a, it's usually a technical challenge that we need to uh, address and kind of overcome. Um, Monsters was the fur, Nemo was the whole murk and the atmosphere you get in water. Um, on Brave, there were, oh, how do we choose? That's your question. We don't really choose, it chooses us. And so um, when it's again, it's to the story. So once we knew that Brave was going to be set in this rustic world, and there was this girl with this massive head of red hair, we knew at the time of Monsters, we could only have one character with hair. We just technically couldn't render the shots. We didn't have the computer power. And now we did, and so we took the hair fur challenged and pushed it even more. The other thing that you can look at is the cloth. Uh, Close-up characters, cloth wasn't made like this in the 10th century. It wasn't manufactured so perfectly. It, so what I would do is I'd go to the fabric store and get all these tartans, then I'd go out to that darn back parking lot and I'd throw it on the ground and you know, stomp all over it and drag it and hit it with rocks trying to break up the even patterns that a manufacturer gets out of this beautiful wool. I was looking for fraying and you know, tears and things, and that's the type of thing that we brought to our um, character team. And so the two big, or three big challenges were the hair, the cloth, and the, the uh, sets with their very rich lichen moss grasses. Um, hey, somebody with red hair back there. Yes. Um, I was going to ask, when you went to Scotland, did you go to Edinburgh? Like, yeah. where did you go in Scotland? Right. When we went to Scotland, did we go to Edinburgh and where? And uh, yeah, we were in Edinburgh for 24 hours, and it was beautiful, really, really cool. But we were mostly looking for the natural world there. So we went up the 
uh, east coast to Dinadar, across through Aberdeen, then out to the west coast with the Isles, Isles of, Isle of Sky, Isle of, what's that? I forget, because then the time starts catching up with me and I can't, it all blends together. All those beautiful islands out there with the standing stones and the big rugged country absolutely beautiful so very very fun and um, if you ever get the chance to go to Scotland really really gorgeous how about uh, yeah in the white okay. yeah um, I've heard uh, this rumor going around but is there really an inside joke with the um, P Sherman from Finding Nemo like I've heard that there were so many like there is and I forget what it is so that <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm not taking it either. So she says, who is P. Sherman? Uh, shoot, if, I, if you, anybody has an answer, I'll send you a prize. Um, I can't remember what it is, but I know there is. But see, yeah. I didn't work on it, so I'm not as close to the details. Like, I heard because there were so many, like, Filipino or Asian, like, people working on Nemo that they said in a Filipino accent, it would be, Sherman. So, and then it worked perfectly with Nemo because it's like fishing. Go for so. it. I think that's great. <laughs> I just wanted to know if it was true. Yeah, I'm not sure, and I, I'm sure you could go online and find out. Um, that's the thing is, uh, and would you like to know where the Pizza Planet truck is on Bray? Yes. Okay, it's in one shot in the wise woman's cottage it's turned it's made it carved out of uh, wood uh, so you got to have a good eye there are a few things that we put in all of our films besides that we do the pizza planet truck and we always make a reference to the next film so our next film that comes out in june is monsters university it's a prequel to monsters inc and uh, in that same location in the wise woman's cottage there's a Celtic carving of, Sully, of Sullivan, the monster. So that's in there. And then there, the other thing that's in all of our films is A113. A113 was the room where a lot of the animators uh, worked when they were in college at CalArts. CalArts is the animation school that's down in Valencia, down in LA. And so, we have to put A113 in all of the films, and that's in the witch's cottage above her front door. It's carved in wood. Uh, so you can look for that when you, when you see it again. Yeah. Uh, well, before I say my question, I just wanted to say that's really cool because my room number here is 113. <laughs> <laughs> you got to take photos of it. It's perfect. I was going to ask, what did you study in college before? So I went to UC Davis for a year and a half and was an art major and took all the art classes I could take, and there were no more to take um, at my freshman level. Um, and I got a lot of my solids out of the way. And then I went to Art Center College of Design, which is a little commercial art school down in Pasadena. And I got my degree in illustration. And then um, my mom told me about three days before graduation that I needed to get a job with a steady paycheck. <laughs> and so I took my portfolio to Disney Studios and um, you know, I was at the right place at the right time. They needed a background painter. A background painter is not the person who draws the characters, that's the animator. A background painter, uh, if Mickey uh, climbs up a tree, jumps up from a tree, runs down a hill and jumps over a fence, I would be the person who'd paint the tree and the hill and the fence. So um, that's what I did at Disney for quite a few years. Really great training. Um, and I forgot to repeat your question, but hopefully you have heard it. Yeah? Where do the ideas and the stories come from? Do you get them from independent films? Where do, where do the stories come from? Yeah. All of our stories come from within Pixar. In fact, if any of you were to walk up to me later and say, I've got this great idea, I have to immediately puncture my own eardrums. So I'm not allowed to, to listen to anybody pitch a story because if we should then do a story, 
Um, there gets to be all kinds of legal things that go on, so I'm not allowed. And so far, we, all of our stories are originals from anyone that works at Pixar. It could be the cook, it could be the um, head of Pixar University. It doesn't have to be a director. Anyone can pitch a film. Yes? What impact has 3D had, and how do you approach the uh, say that again. What impact is 3D? Oh. How do you personally? What impact has 3D had? So uh, Finding Nemo comes out. Very. It's either out or it's coming out in the next week or two. Um, I'm going to be really honest. I'm not a fan of 3D, and one of the reasons why is because I already have a pair of glasses on, <laughs> and after a, an hour and a half, with another pair on, it's not that fun. Um, it also tends to uh, often darken a film. And so with Brave, which I saw in both 2 and 3D, uh, our darks got, we lost information sometimes, visual information. Uh, that said, from what everyone has told me, Nemo is supposed to be absolutely gorgeous in 3D. And the reason is because we have this thing called Merck. And uh, you know, there's tiny particles floating in the ocean. It is not crystal clear. And so how I see you compared to how I see you back there in the baseball cap is obliterated by lots of floating Merck, as we would call it. And in the 3D world, apparently that just makes that world uh, on Nemo become even more alive. So I will see it in 3D. Uh, how, if you want to know how it's impacted business, I don't really know. What about creativity? But we don't do anything different. So it's, a, it's at the back end of our filmmaking process. Um, so we do all of our artwork and all of the things that we need to see on the screen for 2D. And then we have a department that then takes all those pieces and manufactures it into a 3D film. Yeah? Um, is there a separate team that works on the uh, Pixar shorts? And when does, how do you decide which shorts to put in which way? So is there a separate team that works on our Pixar shorts? And how do we decide who's going to work on those teams? And or how do you pair them with the movie? Oh, um, we. First off, yes, there, is a, there are separate teams. You, very often, once you finish a film, like I just finished Brave a few months ago, they might ask me to work on a short film. It's a lot less stress and work. It's um, very fun and quick. Um, so usually they'll try and you know, sort of uh, piggyback you onto a short film. The way we figure out what short is paired with what film a lot of times is just how they roll out. So we have right now four films in different stages of production that I know of. And we probably have three short films that are also in production that are starting to line up with the film. We try to give them the same kind of um, um, feel so that there's a nice flow. Um, you know, you were brave, it was, kind of that beautiful quietness of the forest paired really nicely with um, La Luna. This, and if you haven't seen it, it's the most beautiful short film in front of Bray, just so <coughs> sweet. Um, and so it runs the same kind of a course as a long feature film. Yeah. How about a couple more questions? Yeah. Since you put in so much time on these films, what do you do to celebrate at the end? <laughs> Party, the annual party. <laughs> yeah. So the question was, we work really hard on these films. What do we do when it's finished? Uh, probably what a lot of you students will do at the end of four or five years. <laughs> uh, we have a great big wrap party. And so about two weeks to a month before a film is released to the public, they show the film to us at a location in the Bay Area, the Paramount Theater, uh, the Fox Theater, uh, that's been at the Castro, and then we will have a party afterwards um, to celebrate. And for Brave, there, there's a winery up in Napa called 
Castella de Amorosa or something. And so they had, complete with the dungeon. And so they had our first, that was the first time we screened our film outdoors and then had the party right there at the castle. So it is a really nice treat. One of the really nice things about working on a film is you have closure and you can say it's finished and put it behind you and move forward. You know, my sister's an accountant. Her work is constantly sort of rolling over and she never gets to stop and have a rap party. And so I try and bring her to ours once in a while. Um, but I feel really, really lucky to be in this business. It's really a treat. Yes, last will question. There, will there be a fourth uh, toy story? Or are you gonna... uh, the question is, where, will there be a fourth toy story? And the answer is, I can't answer. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not allowed to speak about certain films that are, are or are not in production after about 2000, I think 14. And so that's not going to satisfy you, so I'll take one more question. <laughs> um, mine's kind of not as exciting, but I was just wondering, um, after years at Pixar, do you still eat the cereal? <laughs> Once, uh, the question is, after all these years at Pixar, do I eat the cereal? Um, I've been there 19 and a half years. There were 50, about 50 people when I started. Now there's 14, or 1,400, or 12, 1,200. Um, once a week, I treat myself to the Captain Crunch. It's really good. They also have the really good oatmeal, too, but I, it was too healthy for me. So <laughs> I like that Captain Crunch once a week. It's really good if you haven't tried it in a few years. Um, so thank you all for coming. It was a great <laughs>